one. Hi, my name is Melissa Fox, and I'm going to tell a story called The Witch of Fife. This originally comes from The Queen's Wake by James Hogg in 1813. Uh, the version I am using is um, from the Celtic Tales, by, published by Chronicle, in which they reference an adaptation by Elizabeth Grierson from the Scottish Fairy Tales. Once upon a time, in the village of Fife, lived a husband and a wife. A husband was the sort that the village, the neighbors liked. He was stable, reliable, good. The wife, on the other hand, was flighty and a bad egg, and the neighbors all gossiped that she was a witch. Well, the husband finally got tired of the gossip and confronted his wife straight up. Are you a witch? She laughed. Of course I am. And if you promise not to tell, I'll let you in on all my secrets. Oh, I promise. He didn't have long to wait. For the next night was the new moon, and that's when everyone knows witches do their adventuring. She came back the next morning with tales of flying through the hills and dancing with wee men who played the most beautiful bagpipe music. Huh, husband said. What good is all that dancing? You would have been better off at home to bed with me. The wife paid him no mind. And the next new moon she went adventuring again and came back with tales of turning cockle shells into boats and sailing north and the elves and the fairies and the woodland creatures they saw. Huh, he said. What good is all that adventuring? You would have been better off staying at home in bed with me. She and wife paid him no mind. And the next new moon, she came back with the tale of going to the lard, flying to the lard bishop of Carlisle's house and celebrating and drinking his fine wine. Ah, the husband said, that's a good adventure. You're a good wife. Tell me the words I need to know so I can go too. Oh no, she said, I couldn't do that. Besides, you would tell everyone and then the whole world would be in chaos. No matter of pleading and cajoling would make the wife change her mind and tell him the words. But the husband had a plan of his, had some secrets up his sleeve. And the next new moon, he snuck out and he watched and he listened and he heard the words that the white witches said to fly away. He said the word too, and he flew away, just like he was a warlock. And when he arrived at the Lord Bishop's, Bishop of Carlisle's house, the white witches were like not terribly happy, but what were they gonna do? Well, that night, the witches talked and they sampled the fine wine and advised the husband to do the same thing. But he paid them no mind and he drank heavily from the cellars, so much so that he passed out. The witch and the wife saw this and said, hmm, and left him there. The next morning, the Lord Bishop of Carlisle's servants found the man, husband in the cellar and they arrested him for stealing and trespassing. Oh no, the husband thought, I should have listened to my wife but it's too late for that. Well, they sentenced him to death, which is a pretty, by, it's death by burning, which is a pretty stiff punishment. He was tied to the stake and he had pyre built around him and the fire started licking at his feet. When out from the sky comes a large gray bird that landed on his shoulder. Everyone else who was there heard cawing but the husband heard the wife whispering the words he needed to break his bonds and set him free. Gratefully, he said those words and changed into a bird and they both flew home to Fife. Once there, he thanked his wife profusely for saving his life and decided to never bother her with the secrets again, but left her to her own devices. The end. Thank you for listening to my story, The Witch of Fife. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.